In the depths of the last glacial maximum, when Europe was locked in snow and ice and vast herds of reindeer, horses and mammoths roamed a desolate steppe, a unique people emerged in the westernmost corner of the continent. They were the Salutrians, master stoneworkers who crafted tools of almost supernatural delicacy, producing blades so fine that modern nappers marvel at their symmetry. Yet their mystery lies not only in their art, but also in their ancestry. For decades their origins puzzled archaeologists. Were they the heirs of the Gravettians, who had dominated Europe before the ice tightened its grip, or newcomers from across the Mediterranean? Recent breakthroughs in ancient DNA have deepened the mystery. Solutrian genomes reveal that they preserved an ancient current of Eurasian ancestry, one that had vanished almost everywhere else, linking them both to the earliest Aurig nations and to the later Magdalenian peoples. In the frozen valleys of Iberia and Aquitaine, the Solutrians became living archives of deep time, carrying genetic signatures that stretched back not just across Europe, but across all of Eurasia. The Solutrian world was a world of cold. Between roughly 24 and 19,000 years ago, temperatures reached their lowest point of the Ice Age. Sheets of ice stretched over northern Europe, while the steppes of central Europe grew barren and lifeless. Humans who had once flourished in Gravettian camps scattered, retreating into refuges at the edges of the continent. Southern France and Iberia became one such sanctuary, a place where pockets of land could still sustain game, where caves provided shelter, and where the warmth of the Gulf Stream blunted the worst of the glacial winds. It was here, in this fragmented refuge, that the Solutrian culture was born. Their territory was restricted, a narrow arc from the French Dordogne through Cantabrian Spain and down to the caves of Andalusia and the Atlantic plains of Portugal. Unlike the Gravetian before them, whose people ranged from Central Europe to Russia, the Solutrians were bounded by the limits of survival. To the north, the glaciers blocked any expansion. To the east, harsh stepper lands offered little respite. They became a western enclave, culturally and genetically distinct whose survival depended on maintaining fragile networks across southern refugia. For over a century, the origins of the Salutrians were debated. Some scholars proposed that they had roots in Morocco and Algeria, pointing to similarities between Salutrian stone points and Atyrian tanged tools. Others argued for a purely local development out of the Gravetian, a culture adapting under isolation to the new challenges of the Ice Age. The latter view eventually prevailed, but the truth proved far more complex. Genetics has revealed that the Salutrians inherited their ancestry from a western Gravetian population known today as the Fornol Cluster. This group was itself a descendant of the Aurignacian pioneers who entered Europe around 35,000 years ago. Unlike the Gravetians of Central Europe, who belonged to the Vestonice Cluster and who were ultimately replaced, the western Fournol population survived the Ice Age contraction in Iberia and France. The Salutrians were their heirs, a cultural manifestation of survival and adaptation in the coldest years of the Ice Age. Their very existence challenges earlier assumptions that the last glacial maximum represented a genetic break across Europe. In the west, there was not rupture but continuity, a long thread reaching back to the Aurignacians. The real revelation came with the sequencing of a Salutrian-associated genome from Cueva del Malalmuerzo in southern Spain. This individual, dated to about 23,000 years ago, carried a genetic profile that astonished researchers. His mitochondrial DNA belonged to a subgroup of haplogroup U2, an ancient lineage rarely preserved in Europe after the Ice Age. His Y chromosome was of haplogroup C1 a lineage once common among early Europeans but nearly extinct today. Even more intriguingly, his genome placed him in an intermediate position between the Aurignacian individual Goyer Q2 from Belgium and later Magdalenian peoples from La Rochette, France and Elmiron, Spain. He was a genetic bridge, a missing link between the earliest modern humans of Europe and those who thrived after the Ice Age thaw. Yet the mystery runs deeper still. The Malalmerzo genome carried a trace of ancestry related to the Tianyuan individual from China, who lived 40,000 years ago. 
This Tianyuan signal connects the Salutreans not only to Western Europe, but to a much older pan-Eurasian population that once stretched from Bulgaria's Bacho Kiro cave to the plains of northern China. By the time of the Gravetian, this ancestry had disappeared from most of Europe. Yet in the Iberian refuge, sheltered by ice and mountain, it lingered, preserved within Solutrian bloodlines for thousands of years after it had faded elsewhere. In this way, the Solutrians are genetic time capsules, bearing witness to forgotten migrations and lost lineages of the deep past. Did Salutrians carry the mysterious haplogroup X or migrate across Atlantic ice to the Americas and create the Clovis culture? Well, that is a topic for another video. Physical remains of Salutrian people are scarce, yet enough skeletons and fragments exist to sketch their form. They were generally tall by prehistoric standards, with men often reaching 179 centimetres in height, slightly shorter than their Gravetian forebears, but taller than later Magdalenians. Their frames were gracile compared to the broad and muscular Gravetians, a build more adapted to mobility across rugged mountain terrain and long-distance foraging. Women stood about 158 centimetres, 5 foot 2 inches, their bones light but strong, reflecting the intense physical activity of Ice Age life. Facial reconstruction suggests that high cheekbones were a common trait inherited from Gravetian ancestors. Their teeth too resembled those of the Gravetian, with large crowns and strong enamel suitable for a meat-heavy diet of reindeer, horse and ibex. Genetically, Salutrian pigmentation likely reflected the transitional palette of Upper Paleolithic Europeans. They had relatively light skin compared to their ancestors, about as dark as modern Sardinians, with hair that was predominantly dark and eyes that could range from brown to lighter shades. Their appearance, like their genetics, was a mosaic, bearing echoes of the Aurignacian past and foreshadowing the Magdalenian future. To understand the Solutrians, one must imagine life in the Ice Age refugia, bands of hunters clustered in caves and rock shelters, their fires flickering against painted walls that still bear their outlines. At Cueva del Malamuezzo, Solutrean rock art depicts animals and symbols, silent testaments to their world. Their subsistence depended on herds of horses and reindeer, hunted with finely crafted laurel leaf and shouldered points. At places like Soluta in France, archaeologists uncovered vast deposits of horse bones, suggesting communal drives where animals were herded into traps and slaughtered en masse. The Solutrians excelled at flint napping. Their leaf-shaped points and delicate barbed arrowheads were masterpieces of pressure flaking, a technique requiring immense control and patience. Using antler batons and soft hammers, they could flake thin slivers from stone, producing implements as sharp as razors and as beautiful as art. These tools were more than functional. They symbolized skill, identity, and perhaps even spiritual belief. Alongside them, they fashioned ornaments of bone and ivory, beads and pins that hint at the symbolic richness of their society. The Salutrians did not vanish into extinction, but flowed seamlessly into the Magdalenian horizon. As the ice sheets receded around 19,000 years ago, human populations re-expanded northward and eastward. The Magdalenian culture blossomed, spreading across Europe and producing some of the most famous cave art at Lascaux and Altamira. Genetic studies confirm that Magdalenians carried ancestry derived from Salutrians, who in turn preserved Aurignacian roots. This Western lineage endured in Iberia and France, becoming one of the main contributors to post-glacial Europe. In contrast, other refugia followed different trajectories. In Italy, the Gravetian Vestonice ancestry was replaced by Epigravetian peoples linked to Near Eastern lineages, later known as the Villa Bruna cluster. Thus, while Central and Southern Europe saw replacement, the West saw continuity. The Salutrians, despite their narrow range, preserved the torch of Western European ancestry through the coldest years of the Ice Age. Without them, the genetic and cultural legacy of the Aurig nations might have disappeared altogether. What makes the Salutrians compelling is their dual identity. On the one hand, they were an isolated refuge population, hemmed in by glaciers and reduced in numbers, 
clinging to survival in the caves of Iberia. On the other hand, they were bearers of profound genetic legacies, carrying within them echoes of ancient Eurasian populations that stretched from Belgium to China. Their tools show mastery and innovation, their art shows continuity of symbolic life, and their DNA reveals secrets of forgotten lineages. Their mystery lies not only in what they left behind, but in what they guarded. They were custodians of a genetic heritage that might otherwise have been lost. They remind us that survival during the last glacial maximum was not only about persistence in the face of environmental extremes, but also about preserving the memory of humanity itself, encoded in bone and blood, waiting to be rediscovered tens of thousands of years later in a laboratory. The Salutrians emerge from the mists of the last glacial maximum as one of prehistory's most enigmatic peoples. Their geographic range was narrow, confined to southwestern Europe, their culture was distinctive, marked by extraordinary stoneworking techniques and symbolic art. Their appearance combined the tall stature of Gravettian ancestors with the gracility of a people adapted to harsh landscapes. Most of all, their genetics reveal them to be both heirs and bridges, descended from Western Gravettians, carrying traces of ancient Pan-Eurasian ancestry and transmitting their legacy to the Magdalenians who followed. Their story is one of survival in extremis, but also one of preservation and continuity. They were not simply another culture in the long chain of the Upper Paleolithic, but the guardians of ancient lineages. In their blood, one can trace the survival of Aurignacian ancestry, the persistence of Tianyuan-related genes, and the foundation of the Magdalenian expansion. In the frozen valleys of Iberia, the Salutrians endured mysterious and resilient, and in doing so they ensured that Europe's deep genetic history survived the coldest chapter of the Ice Age. Thank you for watching.